Since time immemorial, fire has been important to mankind, giving warmth, light, and protection from the forces of darkness. Wherever a few people were gathered, a fire was kept. Warmth, perhaps the first ever valuable resource to be shared by a community. Since Viking times, Danish communities have celebrated Midsummer's Eve with bonfires, a tradition that continues to this day. The fire remaining a symbol of warmth and light that brings the community together, singing of their love of their country and its landscape. Denmark is a land of rolling meadows, green and majestic woodlands, and unspoiled fjords and beaches, a natural environment which the Danes value and protect with a cultural heritage that has formed their urban development and their modern society. The Danes have moved with the times. With few heavy industries or primary resources, the Danes have long recognized that their future lies in their ingenuity, innovation, and ability to develop and organize, to create products and technologies that work and that are pleasing to the eye, inspiring to the mind, and above all, a better solution to a human need. The new in harmony with the old. Over a hundred years ago, Denmark became the cradle of a new technology for heating homes and other urban buildings. As in all European cities after the Industrial Revolution, Copenhagen had grown as more people migrated to the city. The suburb of Frederiksberg no longer had land available for waste disposal and the municipality decided to build a waste incineration facility. At this time, every house and building in Copenhagen was heated by its own boiler, fireplaces or stoves, and some Danes were looking for a better, cleaner and more economical way of heating homes and providing hot water. They decided to use surplus heat from the new waste incineration facility to provide heating and electricity to the community. The idea of moving surplus heat from one place to another had already been tried in other countries, but it was here at Frederiksberg in Denmark that one of the first viable public district heating systems based on surplus energy was established. District heating was born, and the quest for better, cleaner and more economical solutions has continued here for a century, giving Danish society a unique ability to manage its energy needs and to meet the growing requirements for a clean and efficient energy policy. To see how Danish experience can be employed elsewhere, just imagine. The idea behind district heating is simple. Instead of every building having its own heat source, large heat generation plants supply energy for space and water heating to all buildings in an urban area. Using a variety of energy sources and technologies, district heating facilities produce hot water which is stored in large insulated tanks, typically at temperatures around 90 degrees Celsius. From the holding tanks, hot water is piped through a network around the community. Each building or group of buildings is served by a heat exchanger, where the heating and hot water supply for the building is heated by the district heating water. The two water systems are not mixed. The cooled district heating water is then pumped back to the heat generation facility to be heated again. The use of holding tanks allows the facility to produce heat periodically, establishing an energy reserve sufficient to heat the community for up to several days without the facility having to heat water constantly. This allows the facility to shut down heat generation at night or during weekends, or when running the boilers would be uneconomic due to low demand or fluctuating fuel costs. Given an urban area with an adequate building density and enough consumers, district heating requires less energy than the traditional method of each building having its own boiler. There are many other advantages. 
A publicly administered district heating facility is far more efficient and easier to subject to environmental control than individual boilers. And the energy supply is available 24 hours a day, with little or no maintenance for the individual consumer. A modern district heating substation in a typical house requires far less space than a central heating boiler. This compact heat exchanger can fit into a small cupboard, together with the electricity fuse board and water main. And modern technology allows the heat consumption to be metered remotely. When sitting at a desk or performing light manual work indoors, the average person produces between 50 and 100 watts of energy per hour. In a busy office, shop or indoor workplace, the inhabitants contribute to the heating of the building. Modern buildings with better insulation, architectural designs that exclude windows that can be opened, and high-density technical installations such as computers and electronic equipment often require large cooling and air conditioning systems to maintain a comfortable ambient temperature, even in the colder climate of Northern Europe. The district heating concept can also be reversed to provide district cooling. A network of pipes supplies cold water to buildings, where heat exchangers are employed to remove waste heat. In Copenhagen, the district cooling project is being developed to serve buildings in the city centre. Cold seawater from the harbour is pumped to a new cooling facility, where it's used to provide coolant water through a network of pipes to the surrounding business community. District cooling offers scale of magnitude advantages similar to district heating. A single cooling facility is much more efficient than separate air conditioning systems, each with its own energy source. The air conditioning and cooling systems of traditional city centre buildings usually require a lot of space and often result in unsightly rooftop installations. In this building, the editorial offices of one of Denmark's leading daily newspapers District cooling gives a comfortable working environment and has released valuable floor space. The entire building is connected to the district cooling network via this small heat exchange system located in the cellar. And the rooftop area, once the location of a large air conditioning plant, is now a staff canteen with a skyline view of the city. The worldwide potential for district cooling is enormous. In many emerging economies in the Far East, the growing use of individual electric air conditioning systems is creating a demand for power which often exceeds the supply capacity. District cooling can accommodate such growth, whilst offering an efficient and environmentally preferable solution. <laughs>